in dynamics and uh, dynamic force analysis of reciprocating engines, determining the inertia torque of a connecting rod is not straightforward. So in our previous video, we have introduced interesting concept, namely dynamically equivalent system, wherein we have replaced the connecting rod mass by two concentrated masses placed at some distance apart. When we apply the dynamically equivalent system concept to the connecting rod, we need to additionally consider one more concept, which is known as correction couple. In this video, we are going to talk about the concept of correction couple that needs to be applied during dynamic force analysis of connecting rod. So let's get started. Hello everyone, it's Dr. V. Tekma, welcoming to my channel. I am making lecture videos for the benefit of mechanical engineering students. If this is your first time, not yet subscribed yet, please press the subscribe button and also the notification bell icon so that you get notified all my forthcoming videos. I have given all my videos pertaining to the subject in the description below so you can watch and get benefited from the same. After watching this video till the end, you should be able to understand the situations in which correction couple has to be considered. Then how to determine magnitude and direction of the correction couple of a given connecting rod. Finally, we are going to solve a numerical problem on connecting rod. First, let us understand where we need to apply correction couple. We will not be considering the correction couple when we have not considered the connecting rod. Only when the connecting rod comes into picture, we will be considering the correction couple. Dynamic force analysis problem considering the connecting rod can be solved by two methods, namely graphical and analytical method. When we solve the problem analytically, we need to consider correction couple. We need to calculate the correction couple and that should be included in the calculation part. Clear? In the graphical method, the concept is taken care by itself. So we need not to additionally calculate correction couple if you solve the problem by a graphical method. Is that clear? Yes. For our convenience, theoretically, we would like to replace the mass of the connecting rod by two concentrated masses. If M is the mass of the connecting rod, we are going to replace that mass by two concentrated masses, namely M1 and M2, as you could see from the diagram below. This is what we call as dynamically equivalent system. If you remember, these are the three conditions which we have applied so that we can technically call that the obtained answer is a dynamically equivalent system. So based on these three conditions, we have got three expressions by using which we can very well determine the required answers, namely M1, M2, L1 and L2. So this mass M1 is replaced by M1 and M2. This is the L1. This is the L2. I already told you L1 plus L2 not equal to L. That means this mass M2 will not be acting at that cramping end. It will be acting somehow inside. But while solving the problem, we prefer to have two equivalent masses at both the ends of the connecting rod. I would like to have M1 at smaller end or at gudgeon pin end. I would like to have M2 not here. Instead, I would like to have at crank pin end, at bigger end of the connecting rod. So now what I am doing, I am shifting my mass from ear to ear. When I shift, this has become dynamically to non-dynamical that creates a problem. So that means some condition is not satisfied. If you see these three conditions, because of the shift, first two conditions still will remain same. Total mass will remain same. CG is not changed. But what happens to third condition? 
third condition is not satisfied because we have changed the distance the mass moment of inertia of the new system has become slightly higher than the dynamical system if third condition is not satisfied means it is not dynamically equivalent system so what i will do still i will put m to at the end i will add additionally one correction couple so that theoretically this problem becomes dynamically equivalent system problem are you getting me now when i add correction couple third condition also satisfied clear that is the idea how to find magnitude of correction couple m mass of the connecting rod k radius of gyration of connecting rod so in this case how to find k k square is equal to l1 into l2 how refer to equation 3 of dynamically equivalent system which we have already studied now let k1 be the new radius of gyration of non dynamical connecting rod system i mean to say this system k1 because it has shifted its position there so k will not be the same i know l1 i know l3 how to find k1 k1 square is equal to l1 into l3 there you are okay also we know that what is the formula for torque t is equal to i alpha what is alpha alpha is angular acceleration of connecting rod alpha should remain same for both old and new system am i right yes we will determine what is the torque required to accelerate the dynamically equivalent system how can i find the formula torque t is equal to i alpha i equal to m k square alpha right now let me see what is the torque required to accelerate the non dynamically equivalent system that means this system how can i find same formula i call it as some different name t1 t is equal to i alpha this i will be m into k1 square alpha m is equal to m1 plus m2 right this is the equation for torque required to accelerate non dynamical system will they be same no which torque will be more probably the t1 might be more right now if we determine difference between the torque required to accelerate non dynamical system and torque required to dynamically equivalent system that difference which is nothing but correction couple so correction couple is equal to difference between these two or in other words if you want me to simplify i can write here m can be taken commonly outside it becomes k1 square minus k square into alpha so by using this formula m into k1 square minus k square into alpha we can get the correction couple so correction couple will be acting in the same direction as that of the angular acceleration of alpha in other words we could say correction couple direction will be applied in the opposite direction to that of the inertia torque so we have got the magnitude and the direction quickly shall we solve our numerical problem using that logic yes a small connecting rod 220 mm long between centers probably they are given directly the length of the connecting rod as a mass of 2 kg mass of the connecting rod is given here moment of inertia 0.02 kg meter square about its center of gravity so in other words i could call this is nothing but i value of the connecting rod given directly the center of gravity is located at a distance of 1 tmm from the small end center so we call from small end center we use the notation l1 is it determine 
dynamically equivalent two mass system when one mass is located at the small end system. So dynamically equivalent system means what we need to find? We need to find magnitude of two masses m1, m2, location of them l1 and l2. One location is given that is one mass is at smaller end it is given. So this already given we need to determine m1, m2 and l2. Is that clear? Continuation of the problem says if the connecting rod is replaced by two masses located at two centers. So they're asking you to find correction couple. Angular acceleration of the connecting rod is given. That to anti-clockwise direction is given. Alpha connecting rod is given. So these are the given data. So please understand I am using the same notation. First, we will find dynamically equivalent two mass system. By using the three conditions, we got three expressions. These are those three expressions. Simply substituting all the given data in those three expressions, we will get the required answer. So which equation we have to use first? The third equation, I have told you, isn't it? Yeah. We know both K and L1. So this is one answer. Now, let me apply this equation here. So substituting them, we got M1. So now finally, I'll be using equation for M2. So there you are. Mere substitution, I got all the three record answers. Okay, of first substitution. Fine. We need to find the correction couple TC. We know that correction couple is equal to T1 minus T. So mk square into alpha. This is the formula for correction couple. Now what are known? M is known. This k is known. This alpha is given. So I need to find k1. We know that knowing L1, knowing L3, we can very well find the k1. How can I find L3? If I know L1, L1 is given 150 mm. Total length is 220 mm. So from this, I can write L3 is equal to L minus L1. So 220 minus 150, that becomes 70 mm. So I could easily find K1 square, right? So from here, I can find K1. I get K1 like this. We can very well find TC. What is the value? M, 2 kilo. What is K1? 0 0.1024 whole square. What is K? 0 0.1 the square. What is alpha? Given in the problem, 20,000. So TC by substitution. Right. So we have got the answer for correction couple. Will be same direction as that of angular acceleration alpha. Alpha is given as anti-clockwise, counterclockwise direction. Therefore, this also will act in counterclockwise direction. So we've determined magnitude and direction of the correction couple as we have discussed. In our next video, we are going to discuss dynamic force analysis considering the weight of the connecting rod. We will try to solve by both graphical and analytical method. Okay, that's it. But do not forget to like this video, share with your friends and also subscribe the channel. So let me catch you in the next video. Thank you for watching. Take care. Bye.